What's up, everybody? It's pre-cap time with Miss Wesley, and today we are starting a new topic, plane curves and parametric equations. I'm looking at a brand new packet so we can organize our notes on this over the next few days, and I'm pumped to get into it. So what could be better than starting with a joke? And this was a submission from one of your classmates, and I thought it was pretty funny. What would you call a secret agent who enjoys taking baths, like soapy baths? You might call him Agent Bubble 07. Now let's get into it. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have out is your graphing calculator, because we're gonna do, do some cool stuff with that today too. Okay, so let me just peruse the top of this page. Up until this point, we what we've known and loved for the most part is graphing what they call uh, rectangularly in terms of two variables, X and Y. I wanna talk about why they call this rectangular graphing, rectangular. We might have mentioned this once or twice before earlier in the year. If I'm plotting just the point two, three, let's say, the ordered pair, in a way, I'm making a rectangle to get to that point. If I move from the origin, I'm going over horizontally two units, and I'm going up three units to get to those coordinates, one, two, three. So I've made a little rectangle of sorts. In this section, we're going to talk about advantages to a new kind of system of graphing in which we introduce a third variable to represent a curve of some kind of object, some kind of motion of an object traveling in a plane. To see how this is useful, I picked out an example at first that we're going to use the calculator to kind of analyze. And the situation is you have some object propellant, propelled into the air at an angle of 45 degrees. When the initial velocity is 48 feet per second, you can actually use equations for motion to get this rectangular equation to model the path of the object. And we know a good bit about this function. We've studied second degree polynomials. We know this is a parabola that opens down. If we were to expect what the graph would look like, we get intercepts, we could actually get, you know, we've talked about parabolas a lot earlier in this chapter. We could get a vertex, a focus, and so on. Although this is a pretty good equation because it gives you, if you put horizontal distance on the x-axis and then vertical distance traveled by the um, object on the y-axis, that's kind of nice. It gives you x's relationship to y, but like it says here, you don't get the full story. It does tell you where the object has been, but it doesn't tell you when it's at each specific point. So parametric graphing is all about introducing a third variable called t, and we'll call that a parameter. Hence the name parametric equations. So t is your third variable being thrown into the mix with x and y, and it's possible to write both x and y as a pair of parametric equations that come as a set to obtain the, let me write what I just said, parametric equations. And here, later, trust me, we'll be finding these things on our own, but here it's been handed to us. This pair of equations, x equals this expression in terms of t time, and y equals this expression in terms of t, I'm arguing should give you the same exact shape as this graph, should give you the same model, because it's still the situation for the object, but it should tell you more. It should tell you about where the object is and when it's at that point. So actually what I want to try next is go straight to the calculator and see what we can get um, to show up here. So let me move myself again and I'll pull my calculator up. And I think I've called pre-calculus before the class of many modes. Have you ever heard me say that? Maybe not. If you hit mode, I want you to reminisce on some things that we've used on this screen before if you're looking at a TI-84 or an 83. Um, we've used in this row, we've used, where is it? Okay, so function mode is graphing in terms of x and y. We've actually used sequential mode a little bit. Can I go down and over here? Yeah. Sequential mode, we've used a tiny bit because we did do a mini unit on um, sequences in series and we graphed discrete points to show a sequence, all the memories. Polar mode, get ready for it, spoiler, we'll be using that a lot in the coming unit. And parametric, that's the one I want to choose. I want to hit enter for parametric mode and watch what it does. Can you hit y equals now? This should change the way that your graphing setup is on your calculator. So I'm going to go to y equals. And then what I see, you should see a blank screen like me, unless someone's been using your calculator and plotting a bunch of parametric graphs. So if I see something in there, I'll just clear it out. I'll delete what's ever written there. I'll just hit clear. And then what I get is for each graph, a pair of an X and a Y in terms of T. So X sub one in terms of time and Y sub one in terms of time. And what I wanna do is carefully go to my packet and then see if I can 
um, just type those two equations in to see if we can get the graph to show up. So the first one was 24 square root of 2t. I'm going to experiment with this. Square root of 2. Now where am I going to get the t? Well, same place I got the x when I was graphing rectangularly. This button by the alpha key has x, t for parametric, theta is going to be for polar mode, and then n we saw was sequential mode. So we'll say 24 square root of 2t was, ooh, and the t was not supposed to be inside of the square root, so let me just take that back. So I'll hit the right arrow and then put the t outside of the square root for that first equation. Second part of this parametric set of equations, negative 16, go back to the t squared, uh, plus, I have it blocked here, it should be 24, and then square root of 2, and again that t is not inside of the parentheses, so square root of 2, right arrow, and then a t outside of the parentheses. And now the fun begins. I'm going to try graphing, for starters, on a zoom 6, just a standard negative 10 to 10. So zoom 6. And I'll just see if anything shows up at all, or if I need to change my window a bit. And I get what looks like a line or a curve almost coming out from the origin. Does it look like the start of what this graph is pictured on your paper? That's what I would hope. And if we shift the window over a little bit to numbers that we care more about, I think we'll see this picture. So I'm going to hit window next once that's all typed in. All right, what do we have as options? times minimum and times maximum. Well, in this situation, I guess in this real life situation, I'm going to start propelling the object at time t equals zero, so that's fine. Do you recognize this t max value? I don't know if your calculator is going to have that same one stored in there. It is 2 pi, and if we were graphing something trigonometric, this might be a good theta, or t or theta max, I should call it. But we want to go, how many seconds do you care about? I'll care about this experiment from zero to 10 seconds for the object being in the air. Um, and that might be more than enough. T step. It's asking you, what, how many points do you want it to really go in and calculate for what T values? I'm going to put the theta, this is really the T step for me is just um, any number I feel like it. I'll make it T step equals 0.1, a nice small value. Every, if T is in seconds, every tenth of a second, my calculator is taking a data point for me. X min and X max, well, let's think. Horizontally, the thing is going out, it looks like from zero, let's say, for your x min, to, um, well, in this picture, it looks like x had to go, and does it tell you it's in feet? Oh, it is in feet per second, from zero to like 81 feet. I will, um, my little ode to Drake here, I'll go zero to 100 for the x's. Now let's do the y's. Um, y is how high the object is in the air. Cheating and kind of looking at my picture and thinking about this original rectangular equation, looks like going up to 18 is more than enough to show the highest height of the object. So for y's, I'll go 0 to 20, just so I've cleared it like that. I'll hit graph again, and I don't know if this will wow you or not, because we've seen graphs of many parabolas in our day. This picture, if we were to graph this, matches up with what the calculator gives us as well. So why am I saying that we need this whole new way to graph parametrically if we could have just done the same thing rectangularly with x and y? We need to talk about advantages to these parametric equations. Well, try hitting trace. Here's one huge advantage. If I hit trace on this graph, notice what's given to me. At time t equals zero, the object is out horizontally no feet and vert vertically up no feet. Can you just hit your right arrow a few times at a tenth of a second it tells me exactly where the object is it tells me the object is at about three almost four feet horizontally and up about three feet vertically I'm just gonna trace 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 not only does it give me and I can do second and calc max for these as well but not only does it give me a ballpark for the highest the object ever gets to around a little shy of 18 or 20 feet in the air it tells me the horizontal distance at that time and it tells me when that's happening. At about one second, t equals 1.1, we've reached around the peak of that parabola. So every single point, every single x and y is tied to a time value when that's happening. Parametric curves also have what's called an orientation. We're going to fill this in at the bottom too. Notice these arrows. These are important. So number one, there's a starting point and an ending point to this experiment. The object starts, and once it's hit, once it's gone 72 feet vertically and it's zero feet in the air, we've got this closed dot end point. And the arrows I circled are important too because it tells you the motion. It tells you the direction of the motion of the object. Um, for this motion problem, we can fill in a few more blanks. X and Y need to be continuous functions.
functions of t. You're not going to see any skips or breaks or gaps or VAs in the, in the graphs of these equations. The resulting path is going to be called a plane curve, a curve in a plane. Plane curve. A bit sloppy there too. So some new vocab for us as well. Kind of neat that you can get it to show up on the calculator. I'm interested to getting these things to show up when we graph by hand too. All right, so to continue with the terminology, plane curves, f and g are continuous. The set of ordered pairs, f in terms of time and g in terms of time, is again going to be called a plane curve, plane curve c. The equations, we could say x equals f of t, so you have horizontal motion in terms of time, um, and y equals g of t, vertical, that's a t there, vertical motion in terms of time are your parametric equations. So parametric equations for C for that plane curve as a model. Um, and T is the parameter. And T is always chosen to signify time. Now the fun part, sketching a plane curve. One way to sketch is to plot a few points. That's what we're gonna try today. Just get our feet wet. Think of when you first learned how to graph just in terms of X and Y. I'm sure whatever teacher you had, had you maybe make a T-chart and plug in some X values to get Y values. That's a good way to get our feet wet with this and just get a sense for it. Um, plotting the resulting points that you get in order of, and this is important, increasing values of T. Um, traces the curve in a specific direction. And we're gonna note, I said this was called the orientation of the curve. And what we'll do is, according to our points that are in increasing values of t, we'll put little arrows like you saw here to just show people which way the object is moving. All right, I cannot wait. We have a little graph paper here to sketch and describe the orientation of the curve given by these parametric equations on this specific time interval. I think this is going to be good for us. I'm going to set up a t-chart, but it's not so much of a t-chart, more of like an h-chart here. I need a column for time. I need a column for what x you get from at that time, and I need a column for your y as well. And you're thinking, what can I plug in for time? Use this as your guide. Use this interval and go with easy points that you see. Go with easy whole number points. So I'll go t from the low end point, negative 2, and I'll just count up integers. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I'll go all the way to the right-hand end point, all the way up to 3. To get the x and the y columns, it's as easy as a plug-in as well, right? I'll take this negative 2, plug it in for um, t in this x equation. So negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 gives you 0. Negative 2 plugged into the y equation gives you negative 2 over 2. So you'll get negative 1, and you have a point at 0, negative 1. I think I might put this right on the graph. So can you put a point at 0, negative 1, and then can you actually label that with its time value too? So at 0, negative 1, that's right here. This is what's happening at time t equals negative 2. That's 1 down. Um, plugging negative 1 in. So negative 1 squared minus 4 gives you negative 3. And then negative 1 over 2 gives you negative 1 half. So at negative 3, negative 1 half, that's what's happening when t equals negative 1. How about 0? Let's give it a try. 0 squared minus 4, 0 over 2. So negative 4, 0 is the point that occurs when t equals 0. And now we might start to see some symmetry. With 1 plugged in, 1 squared minus 4, negative 3 coming up again, and 1 over 2, positive a half. So negative 3, positive a half. We see this thing curving around at t equals 1. t equals 2, I think it gets 0, 1 into both equations. So 0, 1, t equals 2. And one more whole number, t equals 3. 3 squared minus 4 gives you 9 minus 4 is 5. And in the x equation, 3 over 2, 3 halves. So at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 and a half, you have your final endpoint, t equals 3. Can you connect those in a smooth curve? This should look like a sideways parabola to you. So let yours be nice and smooth. I always find it a little tricky on this computer program but I tried my best. And your picture's almost finished. This is a great graph of this set of parametric equations just for the interval, negative two to three. But we do have to put the arrows for orientation. So if you're talking increasing um, values of t, this thing is moving, I guess you could say clockwise around that curve. Note that in the graph, one of the benefits is gonna be they can represent graphs that are not necessarily graphs of functions. 
I'm gonna leave it there for now and give you a to be continued. And we're gonna try to graph a few more of these together later. All right, see you next time.